realize about incarceration in prison, county jail, all this is like a big gigantic waiting room. So you go from one part to the next part to the next part to the next part. Everybody's waiting for their turn to go through the process. I've never been to jail before, you know, and it's like, how did I get here? Count one, murder with use of a deadly weapon. This is one of the biggest things I've ever had to do. I'm sitting here fighting because I believe I have a reason to fight. He's strangled from behind by someone holding a ligature to his neck. I've got my life in the hands of 14 people I've never seen in my life. And here's what the evidence is. Ricky Slaughter is on tape. I'm telling you how to do it, I'm not guilty. I'm not gonna go to prison. That's what I see it in my eyes. And if I end with it, we're gonna have to fight for it. I just hope to God that this jury sees through and sees the whole picture. Has the jury reached a verdict? Now listen up. Before prison, this is jail. there's jail, where guilt or innocence hangs in the balance. And each day brings you one step closer to your fate. During one year, National Geographic followed the lives of officers and inmates in the city of Las Vegas for a jail that sees nearly 80,000 arrestees each year. You never know who's coming in next. Put the chest on the wall. This is the world of hard time. It's 5.30 a.m. at the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. And as the day begins, a special team of officers are ready for work. All right, ladies, all the way up to the right, all the way down. Just listen to my voice. This is field services, the internal transfer unit that takes inmates to and from court. To the right. Hey, Clark, come through. Just make sure you're secure and safe and uh, get out there and do the job. All right. You're still here. Let's do it. Officer Wiley is part of a team that sees nearly every inmate in the jail. We manage bringing all these inmates with different charges. All the way to the wall, gentlemen, face set three. That's our responsibility to know where these inmates are going. Three across, three across, fill it in. We're outnumbered sometimes 10 to 1. And we've got to be vigilant because we have potential risk for them to harm us. Hundreds of inmates are shuttled through the halls every day, all headed to their hearings through an underground tunnel that connects the jail to the courthouse. It's a five-day-a-week cycle, bringing inmates with charges of all kinds from the world of jail to their day in court. I got attempt theft, auto burglary. I got a possession of stolen vehicle. Identity theft, theft, and burglary. A robbery for the dead I'm in here on uh, high-level trafficking charges and methamphetamine. You got to pay your prices, do what you do out. Got to pay right here. I'm comfortable with what's happening. I probably deserve what I'm getting today. I've went on a tear here in Las Vegas. We're just waiting. Um, I just found out I can't even take a brush to work. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> so. In Unit 3E, Rosemary Vandekar is among the inmates being prepped for transfer. This is a day two years in the making, the beginning of her trial. And while she may not look it, she's accused of a particularly brutal crime. If found guilty, she may be spending the rest of her life in prison. Rosemary Vandekar is no ordinary inmate. She's a college-educated mother of six, had a successful career, and by all accounts, spent most of her life on the right side of the law. I had a background as an executive director of a mediation center nonprofit that helped as mediators between attorneys and courts and procedures, and a background in restorative justice, helping people stay out of prison and stay out of jail. And here I am. <laughs> In February of 2010, police are called to the home of an elderly man who has stopped breathing, a seemingly ordinary death, until the coroner finds signs of strangulation. Vandekar, the man's caregiver, and her 25-year-old son live in the apartment as well. They are both arrested, and under interrogation, Rosemary takes responsibility for the crime, a confession she now claims was coerced. In a lot of ways, going to trial, I'm relieved. I know that we have a really strong case, and it's been hard sitting in here. It's been a little difficult. So on the outward side, I'm strong, and I'm composed, and my faith is really strong. There's always that little nagging thing that it's hard. Even in the best of circumstances, it's not going to be pleasant. Thank you. And it has to be. It has to be.
I am going to fight and either convince one person to hear me that right needs to be prevail, that I did not commit this crime, and I will walk out of this situation or I'm going to die here. It's not an in-between anymore. It's, it is what it is. As Rosemary steps closer to her fate, upstairs, another inmate is readying for his day in court as well. Ivan Rios has been here for three years now, facing charges from a life spun out of control. The drug life, I didn't like chase it. It was just there, you know what I'm saying? I was young, you know, so I just wanted to party. I wanted to have fun, I wanted me to see Vegas and, and go out, you know? But it also came with a price. I was never sober. I mean, you know, I was always high. I started doing heroin, ecstasy. Ecstasy was really cool. Cocaine was there. I used to just get, love to get high. Rios's out of control drug use peaks one night in 2009, when a massive overdose of meth and heroin causes him to suffer a nearly fatal stroke. He almost dies, but within hours of being released from the hospital, he's getting high again. Less than a month after his stroke, Rios drives two friends to a nearby apartment to make a score. But when his friend goes in, he kills the two dealers inside and steals drugs, cash, and laptop computers. The three men are arrested, and as an accomplice, Rios is charged with burglary, robbery, and two counts of murder, all while still suffering the effects of his stroke. I remember getting picked up. I was there for nine hours interviewing me. It was so difficult at first because I couldn't talk. My brain was not working as fast as to make my lips move. It hit me within like the first three months I was in jail. I was just looking at my charges and I was like, oh my God, I'm here for murder. I'm here for robbery. And I never killed or robbed anybody in my, in my life. I don't, I don't get it. Why, why am I getting charged with this crime? And I, I, I did not have nothing to do with it. I, I mean, I can't kill anybody. I can't. I just think about the moment when they come and get me and I'm walking up to my courtroom. That's gonna be one of the crazy moments in my life. Because of the time the prosecution and defense are given to build their cases, court scheduling, any number of continuances and other delays, cases often take years to go to trial. For the defendant, this means serious time behind bars before getting a chance to plead their case to a judge. For those facing a jury, trial comes with a small taste of life in the free world. Civilian clothes, which inmates are required to wear while in the courtroom. The idea is that if the jury knows the defendant is already in jail, they will be biased in their verdict. But for Rosemary, real clothes are a luxury that she hasn't experienced in two years. I'm thrilled I'm going to have real life clothes. And, and you know, I told my attorney he had this killer silk shirt on the other day. And I said, I can't wait to feel real clothes on my skin. <laughs> My friend actually had me send her tape measures. I took toilet tissue and tape measured myself and mailed it to her. This is the, the, the chest, this is the waist. And so she ended up taking my stuff to the department store to fit clothes for me. Okay. Civilian clothes, here I am. Right. Civilian clothes and designer chains. <laughs> Success? Yes. Jane Rouse. Oh gosh, okay, to the right. To the left, to the left. To the left. To the right. Then to the right. Most criminal cases never make it to trial, ending instead in a plea deal where the accused agreed to plead guilty in exchange for a reduced okay. sentence. Stand when you're ready. But for Rosemary and Ivan, accepting a plea deal is like admitting guilt, something they are not willing to do. So instead, they are taking the ultimate gamble, a jury trial get found guilty and face up to life in prison, or get found innocent and walk out of jail free. It seems surreal to sit here and tell you that my life's on the line. I wrestle with myself all, all the time trying to figure out why and how this is gonna happen. I'm just ready, man, I'm ready. To, I'm just so ready to go over there and, and face my time in court and tell them what, what I did and what really happened. I know I've got great attorneys, and so I have to trust a lot, and I'm going really, really out on a limb on faith. They're trying to give me 16 to 45. I'm not taking 16 to 45, no, because I didn't do it. If you're gonna take 16 to 45 years of my life, then I ain't gonna give it to you without a fight. It's 
the land of the walking dead in here. It's like everybody I see is like a zombie. You know, they're zoned out on psych meds walking around. They're institutionalized to the point to where it's okay for them to sit out on a tier playing checkers and watching crazy TV shows. I don't have any desire for that. So yeah, do I stand out? Am I conspicuous? Sure. Do I maybe do my time a little bit different than everybody else? Sure. But my priorities are probably different than a lot of other people's. I only got one priority, and that's getting free. At the Clark County Detention Center, another inmate is marking his days. But while most are waiting for their trial, Ricky Slaughter has already had his day in court, been convicted, and sentenced to life in prison. But he's fighting for a new trial and one more chance at freedom. Ricky Slaughter is facing multiple life sentences after being convicted on over 12 charges stemming from one violent crime. During a home invasion in 2004, six people, including two children, are tied up with electrical wire and robbed. One victim is brutally beaten and another is shot in the head. After being fingered in a lineup, Slaughter is arrested and convicted, a verdict he's seeking to overturn, claiming mistaken identity. And this time, he's representing himself. I went to trial last year, and that trial was wrongly convicted. So now my goal is to obtain a new trial. It's tough in here because the system's built around taking control out of your hands and control out of your life. And the system's about you don't control anything. You don't control anything in the courtroom. You don't control anything in here. To a degree, representing myself brings control back in my hands. The environment I came from, the home structure, is probably worse than the outer environment sometimes. And so I find myself out there selling weed, find myself out there selling crack cocaine. It took the one time for me to be falsely accused of something for me to learn that it wasn't a game. At the end of the day, this is all that matters. Just getting to that courthouse, getting these documents in, trying to get back home. Eight years behind bars has changed Ricky, but it's still hard time. People make a common mistake, and they think, oh, he's done a lot of time. He knows how to do it now. Now he's programmed. Nah. When you're fighting to keep your humanity, then it becomes harder every day. The easy part is to let go and slip into the routine that they want you to. The hard part is to keep fighting. For many inmates, the hardest part of surviving jail is simply surviving the time. Cases can take years to go to trial. Inmates often go months without hearing from their attorneys, and there is nothing to do but wait. Time like this can take a toll on the impatient and undisciplined. But for Ivan Rios, who nearly lost his life to drugs and violence on the street, time in jail offers a chance to learn the discipline that he lacked on the outside. I do think that jail did save me. Just be like, you know what? Ivan, you better wake up, man, or you're gonna die, you know? And I just started exercising, doing that, and that's what my high is now, you know? I think it was necessary to be in jail. I got the porter job, and that's, that's what helps me out a lot, man. It helps me get through a day, and that porter job really does help. It doesn't, you're not locked up in this uh, little room right here, you know? Rios' first day was all about jury selection. Tomorrow, the testimony begins, leaving one afternoon to go over final plans with family on the outside. Mom? What are you doing? Where are you? Yes, yes, I'm going to go ahead. Can I say that? They called you? My lawyer called you, right? Because I had an issue with my clothes. Yeah, because today we picked the, we picked the, uh, the whole jury today. And so tomorrow we start the opening statements. So that'll let me borrow some, some black pants and some, uh, that's, a blue, that's a blue shirt, you know? So I was like, oh, so I have to wear that tomorrow, you know? Uh, but I just didn't want to be wearing it. I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's my life, you know? And I don't want to be wearing the same thing every day, you know? It, it, I'm, I'm looking up my yaso. My mom is the only one that's been helping me out through this whole years that I've been in here. On the phone, I talk to her almost every day, you know? And for her to have her only child in prison or, or jail, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard for her, you know? I do feel responsible for letting her down and hurting her. I love her to death, you know, and, and she, uh, she, she, uh, she's the only one that's been there for me, the only one I can talk to. Over in the women's unit, day one of trial has ended for Rosemary Vandekar as well. 
And for this evening, at least, jail life has resumed, and with it, the role that Rosemary has assumed during her two years behind bars. Some people affectionately call me jail mom. I think what's been keeping me going is the fact that I've had this diversion in, in here to be able to help somebody else understand the court process or their case. State of Nevada, this is the motion proceed in form of pauperis, which basically says, I don't have the money to do an appeal, and normally when you file an appeal... With her knowledge of the legal system, Rosemary offers advice to other women on their cases. But now that she's the one on trial, she's also the one in need of support. The response and the emotion and the relationship I've developed with some of the women in here has been overwhelming to me because I can honestly say in my professional career, I haven't seen that kind of genuine outpouring that 24 seven, we're here for you. Tomorrow, the trial will begin in earnest. Arguments will be made and evidence will be heard, all leading to the inevitable, a verdict. On the seventh floor of the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, Ricky Slaughter is preparing for his upcoming hearing. He's trying to get multiple life sentences overturned based on what he says is faulty evidence. It's where I spend the majority of my time, breaking down and analyzing my case. I roll this map back and I go to work all day, make sure I don't go to sleep. But what I'll do is I'll research other cases. The other cases I can find in the law library to deal with the same issues that are going on in my case are the same problems. I order those cases up and I'll read them, I'll break them all down. So I look at those cases, I do things like that, pray that the court it's going to be faithful to what the law says and give me the relief I'm asking for. Slaughter's hearing is just days away, where he'll have to stand before a judge. You ready, ma'am? Rather than an open jury, like Rosemary Vandekar is facing today. This is going to be the toughest day, getting through the prosecution the toughest day. Um, I'm feeling optimistic, but it's early. I haven't seen everybody yet. So I imagine it'll be different when I get in there. District Court, Clark County, Nevada, State of Nevada plaintiff. Case number C264424, Rosemary Vendiker, defendant. With that said, state when you're ready. Opening statement. This case is about manipulation, greed, and murder. And the elderly man who fell victim to a woman named Rosemary Vendiker. It's not pleasant. This is the ugly portion of the program. <laughs> and uh, you can't do anything but take it. His death was not consistent with a seizure was not consistent with an accident, was not consistent with a fall. He had bruises and injuries all over his body. His thyroid cartilage was fractured. The manner of death was strangulation, and the cause of death was homicide. I was in such shock that I had to force myself to make notes to keep from going into a panic attack or wanting to speak out. That's my therapy. I just make notes. Inside of the defendant's purse was a passport was $5,229 in cash, was an official bank check from Wells Fargo Bank for $10,000. You know, the part of your attorney's job is to be so in control, and yet you as the defendant have these questions, and you need answers, and you can't, because they're in the zone. And if you've ever worked with an attorney that's in the zone, I might as well talk to this brick wall. Plain and simple, ladies and gentlemen, the Santa car is not guilty of murder. Of course, you know I'm going to say that. That's why we're here. So I feel kind of um, like I'm in everybody's way. And I don't do well being the center of attention. I don't like this. Part of me just wanted to scream today. I just wanted to scream, what the hell are you doing to my life? And then part of me knows, without this pain, I won't have a life, so. When you're talking with these inmates, they're trying to shed a different light on themselves than what they actually are. So when we go in that courtroom and we hear what they actually did and what their crime was, you have to separate yourself. It does wear on you sometimes. Sometimes what you hear and what you know that people are capable of doing, it, it wears on you. Upstairs, Ivan Rios's murder trial is just getting underway. He's being charged as an accomplice in a double murder. And like Rosemary, he's facing potential life in prison. When you commit an inherently dangerous felony, such as robbery or burglary, and during the course of that crime, someone is killed, even accidentally, you are liable for what occurs during that robbery. And that's why at the conclusion of this case, you will see that the evidence supports that the defendant is guilty of two counts of first degree murder, even though his finger was never on the gun and never around that trigger. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Stanton, Mr. Christiansen. 
what he just told you was somewhat interesting, that the state can charge somebody who never touches a gun, never intended anybody to die, never went in. They're saying that I was with, with this guy who did something really bad. I wanted to get high. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't know these guys were going to die. I didn't know none of this was going to happen, so. A lot of people here, they'll take the deal because they get scared at the last minute, you know? They, they know they're guilty, you know? But me, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm, I, I know my innocence. I know I didn't rob anybody or kill anybody. I can't believe my life. And that's what my attorney said, too. It's 50-50. It's, it's roll the dice. This is a pretty big uh, uh, gamble, you know? At the Clark County Detention Center, Ricky Slaughter's day in court has finally arrived, again. He's motioning for a new trial, and this time he's acting as his own lawyer. Do I still get nervous? Absolutely. You just want to do your best, and you're hoping you can convince that judge to do the right thing. But these judges, they don't see you as humans any more than these guards do half the time. You see you as an inmate or a convict. I don't want to be neither. I don't want to be a convict and I don't want to be an inmate. I'm striving every day to be a human being and to keep my humanity. I'm trying to stay sane. And I'm trying to stay a man. For Ricky, today has been eight years coming. Every motion he has filed, all of his preparation has led to this. All right. A courtroom, a judge, and a showdown not only against the evidence, but against the prosecutor who won the case. Mr. Slaughter's present in custody, uh, representing himself. Mr. Giacomo is present for the state. This is on for Mr. Slaughter's uh, motion for new trial. Mr. Slaughter. So a couple issues that I feel like need to be discussed with the court today. Okay. One of them revolves around the admission of that 7-Eleven videotape. We all know the evidence that is not proven to be relevant is not admissible at trial. So the problem that happened here is they failed to prove that the footage was what they claimed it to be, that allegedly this video was supposed to depict me entering the 7-Eleven store location and conducting an ATM transaction with this Wells Fargo card. However, the problem with that is they didn't submit any evidence beyond the video to prove that that's what that video actually depicted. Uh, understood, but you, you understand that no single piece of evidence has to, in and of itself, establish beyond a reasonable doubt your guilt. I mean, there's absolutely. circumstantial evidence, pieces of evidence that all get put together. In. Oh, I absolutely agree with that, but our state's evidentiary laws, Nevada Statute 47070, governs whether a piece of evidence is admissible or not. What that statute says, is in essence, they have to introduce evidence that can prove those additional underlying factual questions. Who is the identity of the individual? What is going on in the footage? Is that the car? And if they don't, then they felt a burden under our state's laws and under the Constitution. Mr. Jacobo? Thank you, Judge. Mr. Slaughter seems to confuse a number of legal issues uh, with some factual allegations. Um, and, you know, uh, it's impressive to hear him make the argument in, in the manner in which he made it. Mr. Slaughter is accused in a count of entering that 7-Eleven with the intent to commit either a larceny or fraudulent use of a credit card. My elements are entry with the intent to commit a crime and that the identity of the person is Ricky Slaughter. Ricky Slaughter is on tape. I looked at the videotape and I believe that looking at it, you can tell that's Ricky Slaughter. Obviously, the jury did as well. The only other thing I'd like to say about the mountain of evidence against Mr. Slaughter is not only the fact that he's identified by like six individuals uh, in, a, in a photo lineup, he is driving the vehicle that is described as the getaway vehicle. He is then caught with the expended casing from the bullet that went through the face of the victim in this particular case, who, by the way, picked out the guy who shot him in the face as Ricky Slaughter. Well, a couple of things to begin with. We have to remember, I think what, what, what was forgotten in your motion, Mr. Slaughter, is that this is a motion for a new trial. It's not, it's not post-conviction writ. It's not a direct appeal to the Nevada Supreme Court. You're moving for a new trial, essentially under Chapter 176. I don't think it really fits under a motion for a new trial. The cases you cite about reversals of cases based upon error, I don't think they are characterizable as similar to this case. I don't think it was error to admit the video. For all the reasons stated above, the uh, motion for a new trial is going to be denied. I just didn't hear I said, you know, I'm wearing the wrong suit. I don't have the educational background, or I don't have the fancy pinstripe power suit on. You know, there's a lot more barriers between me and the judge, and it just crushes you. 
I mean, it feels like literally he superimposed that guy won't just slam it on me. Yeah, that takes the life out of you. But my fight remains the same, no matter where I'm at. Like I say, the fight goes on until I am free. Regardless if they send me back to prison or I stay down in this county jail fighting, it is the same fight. Back at the courthouse, the double murder trial of Ivan Rios continues. And today, his former friend turned co-defendant is testifying against him. Did you see Mackey with a firearm? Yes, I did. And who else was present when you saw the firearm? Me, Mackey, and Rios. But he might be catching a break. On cross-examination, the confidential witness is asked about Rios's take from the robbery that followed the murders. As you sit here today, your claim is you're here to tell the truth, right? Right. And Ivan didn't get anything right. from the robbery, right? From the robbery, yes. Didn't get any weed? No. Nope. Didn't get any money? No. Nope. You've told all these people in the jury that Mackey was unpredictable. Right. And you just simply didn't know what he was going to do when he got out of that car, right? Yes. And you hadn't had a stroke, had you? No, I haven't. Nothing else. The exchange may have gone Rios's way, but the verdict is still anyone's call. Rios's trial may be continuing, but Rosemary Vandekar's is coming to an end. Murder, first degree murder, willful, deliberate, premeditated. After three days of testimony, the prosecution has laid out its case against Rosemary, but her lawyers are confident that the prosecution has not been able to prove Rosemary's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. So confident that they have decided not to submit a single piece of evidence or call a single witness. All that remains is the verdict. This is going to probably be one of the longest nights of my experience here. We ended formal trial today. Tomorrow is the um, a couple of last minute motions and closing statements, and they go into jury deliberation. So tomorrow is going to be the make or break for me. I'm going to watch that sunset, though. It's beautiful. A dust storm. Maybe tomorrow night I'll get lucky. In Unit 3E at the Clark County Detention Center, Judgment day has come for Rosemary Vandekar. Just to review it today, after they do the closing arguments, the jury goes into deliberation. The jury goes into deliberation, and then I go to a cell someplace down here. Up here. Have you decided to testify? No, we're done. We rested today, so I didn't testify. My faith is so strong that I just can't believe that it could go any other way than the sense of right prevailing. I'm going to be honest, I don't know how to gracefully deal with this. I don't know how to package in and say, this is, this is OK. There's no professional way to be scared to death. There's just no professional way. Next, Rios. Ivan Rios is also preparing for the final days of his trial. The evidence has been presented, the testimonies have been heard, and there's nothing left for Rios to do but reflect on the horrific events that brought him here. I know what I did. I didn't murder or rob or do anything. This big thing happened, and it, it's sad. It is sad, you know, for, especially for the families, you know? I mean, I, I just feel sorry for them. Upstairs, Rosemary's team may have rested without a defense, but today her lead attorney is addressing the jury for the very first time. His closing argument, reasonable doubt, and an alternate theory for who killed the victim, Rosemary's son. The state has made a rather convincing showing that of the only two people in that apartment at the time of Rochus was dead, the most likely, the overwhelmingly most likely killer, is Daniel Vandekar. He was killed in a vicious, brutal attack. And that violent attack was carried out over a period not less than two minutes, and probably a lot longer, during which Mr. Schutzler was struggling. Did my five foot, six inch female client inflict those injuries? Is there anyone else that could have? How about a six foot four, ex-Marine, combat veteran, undergoing treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder? That is the person that the police department decided wasn't even worth checking out. No, we'll charge her, because for four and a half hours, a trained interrogator worked on her and got her to the position where she said, what do you want to hear? You want to hear my hands were on his neck, they were on his neck. Whatever you want to hear, I'll say it, but leave my son alone. I just pray that somebody listened to my attorney in those closing arguments, because we presented no defense. So that's my voice. To know that I worked all these years to do the right things, to be 
at this stage of the game in the hands of 12 people that don't have a chance to know me or hear my voice. I'm trusting that jury to figure this out. There's a whole series of evidence and facts surrounding what occurs going over there that suggests everybody knows what's going to occur. Mr. Rios backed in over here. Why? Ivan Rios's trial is in closing arguments as well. Had the plan. The prosecution is claiming guilt by association. But Ivan's public defender is arguing, among other things, that his stroke just weeks before the murders left him incapable of understanding his friend's violent intentions. There is only one verdict in this case. One verdict that doesn't call upon you to guess and speculate. The facts in this case demand that you all uphold your oath, that you go back into the verdict room and you check not guilty. Thank you for your time. I think my lawyer did a good job. I just, I can't be too confident, you know? It's weird how a jury of your peers could find you guilty or innocent. I believe they need proof, and they don't. They don't have no proof. So we'll see what happens. Barely two hours after going to deliberation, Officer Wiley is returning for Rosemary. Her jury has already reached a verdict. Mr. Fourperson, has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, sir. The clerk will now read the verdict of the ladies and gentlemen of the jury out loud. Mr. Court Clark County, Nevada, State Nevada Plaintiff, case number 10C264424, Rosemary Vandekert, defendant. Verdict, where the jury in the above entitled case find the defendant, Rosemary Vandeker, as follows. Count one, guilty of second degree murder, victim 60 years of age or older, dated this 18th day of May, 2012. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is this your verdict is read, so say you one, so say you all? Yes. yes. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my clerk is going to do an individual poll of each of the jurors, where he will ask you if, by juror number, if this is in fact your verdict as read. Jury number one, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number two, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number three, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number four, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number five, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Hey, face the face the wall. Uh, face the face that. Jury number six, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number seven, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number eight, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number nine, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number 10, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number 11, is this your verdict is read? Yes. Jury number 12, is this your verdict is read? Yes. <laughs> At the Clark County Detention Center, Ivan Rios continues to wait for his verdict. The jury has been out for six days without a decision. After sitting in jail for three years, these past days have been the longest, waiting to learn if he will go free or spend the next 16 to 45 years of his life in prison. You just have to be patient, you know, stick through it. It's a waiting game. Finally, word comes down from the court the jury has reached a verdict. I just want to know what the outcome is. Today could be the day I go home, or the uh, beginning of my life in prison. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think that's the worst feeling ever, you know, not knowing what's going to happen. Prison or go home, all or nothing. All right, court is now back in session. The record should reflect the presence of the state, the presence of the defendant, Mr. Rios, and his counsel. Has the jury in this matter reached a verdict? The clerk will now read the verdict out loud and inquire if this is the verdict of the jury. District Court, Clark County, Nevada, in the state of Nevada, plaintiff versus Ivan Rios, we the jury in the above entitled case find the defendant, Ivan Rios, as follows. Count one, conspiracy to commit robbery, not guilty. Count two, burglary while in possession of a deadly weapon, not guilty. Count three, robbery with use of a deadly weapon, not guilty. Count four, robbery with use of a deadly weapon, not guilty. 
Count five, murder with use of a deadly weapon, not guilty. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is this your verdict as read? Yes. So say you one, so say you all? Yes. This is amazing, man. It's an amazing feeling. It was, it was just crazy. I, I, I'll never forget this feeling. So, when are we going to go home? Yeah, sometime this afternoon, probably. That's good. That's good. That's good. Damn, dude, they said not guilty every day. So, I'm out of here. Get, get the hell up out of here. <laughs> yeah, go home, my baby. No, no, I got acquitted of everything. Yeah, not guilty. I want to use this experience and remember, if you want to do drugs, if you want to party, you know, you end up in here, in jail, for three years of your life. I mean, that's a long time. But in a way, it worked out for the best. Well, yes. I, you know, I'm, I'm not mad because I was in here, it's just I needed a little time out. See you later, guys. And it worked. to believe in your mind that this is what our judicial system is all about all right, and you have to let it play out you may not and I may not agree with the outcome whether it's guilty or innocent but we have to keep that in mind that that is our judicial system we've got to continue to believe in that Going out. This is just a, a bad dream. What do you do? I'm absolutely innocent. I'm American. Not do this. I live in California. I've never tortured an American before. You're on death row? All because I said America. Get everyone up! They got drug smugglers, they got murderers and rapists in there. I just want a fighting chance to go home. That's all I need.